Houston Texans, Buffalo Bills, winner of this game would be 4-1. and one. That ended up being the Houston Texans with a last-second field goal. Fairbairn, 59 yards with zero seconds remaining in that one. End of the game was interesting, right? Because the Bills had, what, 20-something seconds? And yes. Back inside back their own in, 10. Inside their own two- or three-yard line, really, right? And, and now part of me is like, I remember that playoff game with Allen and Mahomes where it's like each team scored seven yeah. times in the matter of 30 seconds. Right. No, so it, it's like it, it – it, Two big plays, yes, and maybe you're in field goal range. Exactly right. It, it will. It, they were in a tough spot. It's first and ten on their own three yard line. Just to unpack this little situation real quick. Yeah. The Texans had three timeouts. Okay, so you couldn't run the ball three times, no matter what. They were still going to punt the ball and get the ball in pretty good position. I think Buffalo looked at it. Now, I think the thing you can argue is you know, maybe you run it once just to give your punter a little room to where he can really boom it instead of having to take that one step, get it off quick type of punt. Okay, but I think that's even still, you know, I don't totally fault them for their approach here. I think they looked at it and went, wait, if we punt the ball to them, C.J. Stroud's going to get one completion and the game's going to be over, which is what happened, mm -hmm. right? So they went, let's go down with our best dog, and that our best dog is Josh Allen, and let's see if he can make a play and get us a first down and then just get us into overtime, right, from there. Or maybe he makes a big play and oh, now we go, wait, we'll take another shot. Maybe we can get the field goal range, right? Yep. So I don't think it was egregiously bad there. I don't. Now, could they have called some better plays and maybe been a little more creative? Sure, we can get into all that. But I don't look at it and go, oh, man, Sean McDermott, how horrible the management was there. And the Texans were in a, you know, they were in a power position there, and the Bills were in a very tough spot. What did you like from the Houston Texans, though, to get up 20-3 to in this game? Yeah. Eventually got closer, but what did you like? Right. Most? I mean, you know, it was machine early on. I mean, it was just the, you know, the bomb to Collins. The first drive was just – great throws and run the ball however you want. I mean, they did whatever they want really early on in the football game. The 67-yard touchdown pass to Nico And Collins. here we go. You see it, right? I mean, again, a little, little bit of a like a play action, fake the toss out to the back, and then it's just your underneath crosser, a deeper crosser in the post over the top. And Nico Collins is incredible. Oh. I mean, he's incredible. Uh, the, he really, oh, look at who dots. we Hold got on. here. Okay. Wow, now this is they're back a again. Weekly thing. Look at these guys. It's not even raining indoors. It's not raining outside. Or outside. But it was a rainy day in Pittsburgh, so they <laughs> brought them just in case. Yeah, that's for the lightning. Yeah, actually, See you, you mofos. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, love, love my visits from the uh, Football Night in America crew. Uh, that was well coordinated. That right was there. very well coordinated. They're they're my buddies. We had to get out of dots <laughs> for that moment right there. Yes, we did. Well, well done, team. But it was easy early on for the Texans. Is the point I was getting to? It really was. And you know, the first half, well, really, Buffalo couldn't do anything. They had a little drive with with cooks that looked good or whatever else, and they got a field goal, but. But nothing was easy for them throughout the day. It really wasn't. you got to be concerned about their offense going forward. But I will say in the second half, right, I know the Bills made the comeback. The big thing was that the Bills calmed down the easiness in which the Texans were just moving the ball down the field and finally made it hard on C.J. Stroud to a degree. And then, you know, uh, great interception by the middle linebacker at one point when they were driving. I think it was Bernard who got it. Uh, he kind of tricked C.J. Stroud when they were kind of there in fringe red zone that was big and then getting the strip sack on cj stroud when they were backed up right but throughout the day and again i think big picture here the game was close very close i'm certainly less concerned about the houston texans the houston texans i don't think are playing their best football right now but i, I don't have much on their team that i question a whole lot other than i go hmm i think they have more potential to run the ball better and i'm disappointed in that and that has to get better but the things we were concerned with with the Bills are still the things I'm concerned with, right? I mean, that's what I look at and just go, okay, we got, you know, a six-play, 70-yard drive where I want to kind of go through this real quick. It was a big run by Johnson, and it was an unnecessary roughness penalty and one pass to Kincaid. Then the next drive, they got the ball in good field position, and they went for it on fourth and three, and he threw a ball to Keon Coleman. He broke a tackle and ran for a touchdown. That was, their, that was the extent of their offense, really, for the day. And then they had another tough field goal drive. On the drive, they got the strip sack fumble of C.J. Stroud inside the 10-yard line. They get zero yards and kick the field goal. My point being is, are there enough playmakers on the Bills? I know you're sick of hearing me say this, but I'm going to say it until the cows come home. 
because it is an issue with them. And again, we're back into the mode. Josh Allen was nine for 30 today. That's, I mean, that's crazy. That's crazy. Josh Allen's really smart. He's a pretty good decision maker. He's pretty accurate. Nine for 30 speaks to a bigger problem in your offense. And that's where I'm concerned of it. No Khalil Shakir. And all of a sudden it's like, we don't have anybody that can beat anybody down the field and do anything. And that's something we all got to keep our eyes up for here as we go forward with the Bills because, yeah, they got good coaches. I just don't know if they got enough Jimmys and the Joes to make plays against teams like the Houston Texans. Yo, yo, homies, thanks for watching. Yeah, it's time. The NFL season is here on Chris Sims Unbuttoned. You can hit subscribe to get all the weekly picks, plus our Sunday recaps as the games are happening. Oh, you know it. Nobody does that better than us. Thanks again for watching. Remember to subscribe. Peace out. We'll see you next time on Unbuttoned.